Um, welcome. Good. Hello. We've done yeah. a mic. Welcome. That's it. We've done a mic. Yep. We're here to help so you with your fitness, fitness business. business. Uh, mainly just shout at you and tell you what you're doing wrong, basically. But, yeah. um, you know, it's fine. It works. Works with the turtle. So yeah. we go with it. Um, and yeah, that's it. And uh, tell everyone. Tell everyone about it. Yeah, was it? Uh, I hope everyone's We listening. hope loads of people are listening. Uh, and and if everyone. you are, tell everybody. So not as modest as Stephen Bartlett. We no. need the likes. Yeah, we need everyone. We need everything. Hop on board. Uh, so today's video is off the back of a couple of consults. Um, we've had some topics of discussion. Topics. Or... What should you be focused on as an online coach when you're starting out? Like, what's a common problem we see with people when they're starting out? Um, yeah. The, yeah. The the issue. The I say the issue. The an issue, I guess, um, among many. <laughs> There's multiple. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that people get distracted and sidetracked with, um, should I launch like a member's site? Should I have a, create this course? Um, and Should I sell training plans? Sh- yeah. Should I? It's, it's almost like I need a scalable revenue stream. It's like, dude, you've got like six clients. Um, why are you thinking about scaling when you have nothing to don't scale. have a business? Yeah. Like, um, in the nicest way possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, I think, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's maybe a tension span um, where people think that they need to be working on something new. And it's like, work on the same thing. Why don't you, why don't you work on the same thing? Devote all of your time to working on the same thing rather than being sidetracked with this pile of shit inevitably that doesn't go anywhere. Should I run a Facebook group? Well, not really, because you can't post consistently on Instagram. So you're not going to do that in Facebook, are you? No. no. So it, there's all these little distractions and, and, and things. So I think it's probably worthwhile us just laying down the law. No, laying down, I guess, the things that you would need to do when you need to do them, when to look at maybe having something additional come in or so on and so forth. Um, so what should priority number one be? Get as full as you want to be with one-to-one clients. That's the the number one thing. Basic. Um, and and I wouldn't even at this point have any other options. Like if people talk, say, oh, should I have three packages? You know, no. at different levels, tiers. No, just no. have one. One package at one price. That's what it is. Probably on the lower end of pricing, maybe the way you would want to be in terms of those packages. Get up to 40 clients. See what it's like dealing with 40 people on a weekly basis. What your week looks like. What your schedule looks like. Um, and then go from there. Um, it's, it's that it's that straightforward where like you so like in that example there if you've got three clients six clients whatever it is and you're worried about what part of your business is scalable and where you can be by the time you've got 40 clients you'll have maybe a very different view of what scalable is or what area of the industry you want to go down or what you know what your niche is that you've you've kind of stumbled across because some people do stumble across them as well like when they they get enough people and could be that you started working with blokes that want to get in photo shape but actually you really enjoy working with women that want to lose weight before menopause right i don't know but there's no point worrying about what's scalable if you have nothing to scale um i couldn't can't say any simpler than that it's funny that you funny that you mentioned like the different packages that's that's a big one, yeah. So um, when I when I say so, run me through you know your your pricing and stuff, and it's like yeah. So we got the uh, we got the platinum package, and that's X amount for this, and then we got the gold one, and oh my god, like wh- what, like wh- what, what? Do you know like it's no. unnecessary fluff where you've either picked it up from something or a business mentor has told you to do this so that you're framing the middle option that the platinum one's too expensive, the silver one, no one wants to go for silver, so gold's a good op- op- option. Shut up. Like, stop it. Have one option. Have one option recurring. This is another one as well, is that the last um, the last three sign-ups I've actually had all come from... Same one? Yeah. Wow. And no, Yeah, all, all of them, all doing the same thing. Yeah. obviously yeah. literally the, the last three signups all have come from from that uh from the same person um all charging 997 of course they are yeah. uh for four months or 250 a month okay just charge the 250 a month then. yeah um, then you won't be getting to month four and everybody dropping off um so if you're gonna give them the option of 250 a month just just do that one probably just yeah. do that one and then if they say can i pay up front for x amount of months go yeah okay but yeah, mm. do, do you know what I mean? It's backwards. It's like, and you get the questions from these types of people. So yeah, I, I got this. Okay, so what do you think I should do? Do you think do you think I should um, 
reduce it down to eight weeks and charge six hundred pounds. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Get rid of it. No, you miss my, you miss no, my point. Yeah, no, no, get rid of it. You, you're confusing what is a pretty basic concept. Like, what's happened to the whole? It's one hundred and fifty pounds for me to online coach you. And in fact, we got the, we got um, a, a reply on one of our reels. Rare, actually, that that happens. So if you yeah. see a reel, comment on it. Um, but she said, um, so how would you go about framing what they get then um, in response to a reel that was talking about this, about not uh, setting four-month packages or something like that, right? I was like, well, this is how you frame what they get. You're going to walk them step-by-step step on a week-to-week basis, coaching them to get the result that they want. There's no set amount of time that that's yeah. going to happen for any person because everybody's di- everybody's different. Some, some might only take three months to get in shape. Some might take four. Some might take six. Some might take a year. Some might take a year and a half, two years. So why sell them all the same four-month program where this is what I, I'm learning is that they have a, a rapid fat loss phase. Then they go into a fat loss phase. Then they go into a, a maintenance phase. Then they go into a muscle building phase. Each of them four weeks, In right? four months? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, each of them four weeks, right? What if they're not ready for the maintenance Correct. phase? Correct. So that's why I said. week eight. I was like, what happens if they need to lose more wait than that oh yeah then you adapt it okay so you don't have one then so so stop mm. selling like stop selling this it, it's too complicated like genuinely, the thing, the thing genuinely, is, genuinely I, I that's what they're all doing now. i don't i don't have a problem necessarily with that that way of, of framing it in terms of like we're going to get you you know quick result rapid fat loss like who doesn't want rapid fat loss and then transition into muscle gain but like you're saying it's like it's yeah, but I, I sell that to people when i do fat loss c- Conversation course, but I don't say to them in four months. Yeah. I say, we'll get you from here to here. If you're here and this is where you want to get to, it's likely going to be this amount of weight, likely this amount of time, then maybe we'll be around that point and we'll see where you're at to then go to the next phase of, of the of the transformation or whatever you well, call it. Yeah, because you can't put a set Because you can't say, yeah. But yeah, what they're doing is they're limiting themselves to a set time frame. And it's just too... Because it, you can't gain a lot of muscle in four weeks as well. But yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So, fucking you know. ridiculous. By the end yeah, of that, because yeah. the thing is, if you go into it with that, by the end of that four months, people are expecting to have seen a huge amount of fat loss and muscle gain yeah. in four months. You're they're going to be underwhelmed to yeah, fuck. And then, so. and then they're not going to go into your, when you upsell them to stay on, uh, they're not, they're not going to go into it. So um, one of the biggest things is literally, again, if you're, if you're watching this and you're selling packages and you've got fucking platinum this and gold that and, Fucking get rid of that, genuinely. Coach flat across the board for bespoke, continuous, one-to-one coaching. The biggest argument that you will get is there's nothing preventing people from dropping off. Have a 30 days notice clause in there. That's as good as anything else. That's as good as any other clause or any other package that you sell. It's as good as that because you get 30 days notice to refill that spot. Um, have that. The other, the other um, thing that I've had to come back to that has been that no one wants to sign up for an indefinite period of time Why? when they want to see this result or whatever, right? I've seen that as a, as, a, as a comeback from this. And my argument to that is that on the consultation call, you should know after speaking to them what their goal is, where they want to get to, and you should be able to frame that to them roughly in those timeframes that they would want. So you're not selling nondescript time timed sort of coaching just to just coach to whenever you will have spoken to them and gone well look we'll get you to this point first then we'll reassess then we'll have a call and we'll reassess future goals future things we want to get to because you'll have seen success in that point you then will then see where you want to get to based on your events holidays time of the year all that sort of stuff's taken into account not a predefined four months well i've got some shit going on there then I'm, okay well screw you because that's the way the program's set is that you work around that and again on a call you should have framed that in that way you should be talking through well so for example, some, oh, I want to lose weight from holiday. I've got holiday in, in January. I just feel a bit, uh, June, I feel a bit shit. I don't want to, okay, cool. So what we'll do is we'll focus on fat loss between now and your holiday, right? And probably there'll be a little bit of a diet break in the summer, but we don't know when that's going to be because life happens. So we'll factor it in when the time comes. And uh, then once you're back from holiday, we'll reassess, see if you need to go through muscle building phase and all that sort of shit. Like you would literally talk them through it on the phone, on the on the call. And that's one of the the arguments I've seen from from other people is like, no one's going to sign up for just, monthly coaching without an end date yeah, no or one, end goal. No one. Not the, th- uh, not the thousands of people that have coached. So no one. No. We must have just dropped lucky. Yeah. yeah. We just dropped lucky with the we only have, ones. Yeah. We're the only, the only ones. ones yeah, yeah. The, the only ones. That and, and the reason that they get you like that is because you've been trying to sell that and you haven't been able to. Yeah. So you assume it's that when it's not, it's to do with your messaging, your sales call in general, overall niche, all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. It's all that stuff. Yeah. But they'll sell you on that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so, so, so yeah, that, that, that kind of cropped up. And it's just, again, it's just something else complicated. It's just sidetrack. 
like people being sidetracked because you'll get the you'll get the question as well on on consultation calls. I'm just struggling with my offer and my package. Well, your offer is online coaching, isn't it? If if you're struggling with how to deliver that, that's something that you can work on. But not four months. Who like it's, that's all crap. It's all bump. So the priority should, in in our opinion, be um, month to month coaching with a thirty days notice. Um, putting out content, niche related content. Every day. Every day in your voice um, in, a, in an effort to um, show that you can get them a, a result, that they can, that they like you and that the time is now. Um, those three things coming through your content on a regular basis. Can this guy get me a result? Do I like him? And is now the right time? And that's it. Provide a compelling enough argument for those three. And they will sign up with you inevitably at, at some point. Um, do that when you're getting results with people. Even if you've got less people, think of ways outside the box where you can leverage social proof. You can ask leading questions. You can ask for wins of the week. You can ask for a video testimonial of how they found the first X amount of time or how things have changed in this amount of time. You can show nice screenshots that people send you. Again, you should be plowing as much social proof as you can. I'm producing enough content that trigger that 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 touches on those pain points as you can because that in essence is almost a form of social proof in a way. If you show that you understand where someone's coming from and you you, you understand their problems um, and how to fix them in a way that's social proof as such. Yeah. Um, those are the things that you need to do and keep going and keep going and keep going literally that's it that's the secret formula um until you're at 30 40 clients until you're at a capacity where okay this is the maximum amount that i want to coach and then where do i go from there then you can start to look at another offering then you can look at um, a, a, a passive income stream if necessary if applicable as well to the niche if they um, exist yeah <laughs> it, yeah if it exists um that's where you start to look. But until that point, it's really, really simple. You're just getting sidetracked and distracted with, I'm going to create this product and it's going to do this, it's going to do that, and it's going to do the other. And, and then I'm going to do this. And then it, it's way too much. And I, again, I always bring this back around to their own analogies with, with their own clients. It's like someone coming to you being like, right, I want to get really strong. Um, I've got a powerlifting competition coming up in five months time. Um, Who's going to do best? The person that just does powerlifting during that time and to focus on that or the person who does powerlifting and wants to run 10Ks three times a week. I, it's, it's that straightforward. And, and it's like you, you try and do two things like that that compete with, it's not going to end well. And the same, fat loss, muscle gain. Oh, I want to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time all the time. Well, it's probably better off just doing fat loss first then doing muscle gain after. Mm -hmm. Same thing, because you can maintain your results. Same with this. Once you've got 40 clients, you can maintain that quite nicely. It takes a lot less work to maintain it than it does to attain it. So then you can have the time and energy and focus to then think about other things you can add on top of that. Same thing, and you know, you bring it back to the what your clients want with fitness. And what would you say to that person? The same thing that we're telling you. It's pretty basic. So in terms of we the this the the topic of this being um Get your priorities in order. Your priority should be to get to 30, 35, 40 clients, whatever that number is, as quickly as possible. Literally by just focus, focusing on your content, showing social proof, coaching your clients incredibly well, getting referrals from them, getting more results in a quicker time frame. That's it. That will get you to, to 30, 35, 40 clients. Genuinely, that will get you there. How, when? How long is a piece of string? because you don't know where your start point is. Again, there's mentors out there, again, selling three-month or four-month packages. But how can you how can you sell everybody the same thing? One one client, one coach that comes in might have only got 600 followers. The other one might have got 60,000. So how are they both going to take four months to, 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 to get to wherever they want to get to? It's, it's, it's the same thing. So like, if we can say one thing, genuinely stop worrying. How long was it before we actually changed anything? And moved away from, so, well, so we, we had, we had, well, we, so I, we would have had 40 clients each easily to, before we did group coaching. So me and Dan literally got to a, what would be considered a full, um, what, what we consider full is about 30 or 40 clients, isn't it? Because that's probably a, a wage where you could quite happily sit at and not worry too much if you got a slight fluctuation downwards mm -hmm. and upwards. I would consider that f like full. 
It doesn't necessarily mean my days are full back to back working, but uh, a full time job, I would say, to pay the wages, to cover the bills. Yeah. And if you got four or five drop offs in a month, that it wouldn't be out of business. It felt like enough balance between having to create content, because you just yeah. have to do that, writing your training plans and doing your check ins. It felt yeah. like you had a nice enough two days of content. And then three days of check-ins. Two, 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 what was it? two days of check-ins, one day of maybe training plans, and then two or three days of content, it was. So what we focused on in that time was YouTube and Instagram and email marketing, okay? Um, we picked those for a particular reason. Instagram being, at the time, it was probably, I don't want to say up and coming, um, but still probably is where the majority of people are, majority of clients are. Email, because email is always smart, even if you're just beginning, and right the way up to if you're a multi-fucking millionaire, okay? So email's always smart. And then YouTube, because it was similar hand-in-hand type formatting to our Instagram. We were very video um, content related, so it made sense to do longer format stuff on YouTube because it played into the personality, the characters that we had, and the stuff that we wanted to to say in a, in a longer version than Instagram would allow. We, so, and we, we also did, enjoyed it as well. Uh, yeah, and we enjoyed it. We were it. like, I think that'd be cool to do. So we focused on those things. We didn't have um, a members group. We didn't have, um, like, we didn't set up Facebook, gr- groups. A Facebook group. We didn't set up group coaching until we were at the point where we needed to leverage. Um we got to, like Dan said, 40 clients. I think I was probably somewhere in the middle of 50, 60. You are more, but we both 60. got to 40, I think it was. And then that's where you go, okay, well, now can we create something else? Because you're full. You've got social proof. You've got demand there. That's where you can start to go, okay, well, now let's start to scale. Can we create another arm to the business? And we went down the group coaching route and bringing on, uh, and bringing on coaches. And that's the route that we went down. But we'd focused on the same thing, content, coaching our clients incredibly, incredibly, incredibly well, focusing on clients as the, the front and center, and then just doing content the rest of the time, just not being sidetracked with stuff. The things that we were being sidetracked with were the things that helped the things that we were doing. Dan going and learning video editing and using using a camera. Like, that's not a distraction. That was That was directly influencing how good we were at our content. Whereas coaches just jump from project to project to project, but with no actual clear direction of where the end goal is. It's just, it's just, do you know what I mean? It's just all over the shop. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you don't do anything, you don't do anything effectively. I said this before, like with the muscle gain fat loss thing, I'm like, it's like you're trying to sprint hundred meters, but you're doing it whilst you're juggling. It's the, it's the same thing. It's like, no, no, no. You're going to be much better at sprinting if you do it without juggling. And you're going to be much better at juggling without sprinting. Like, you've got to do one thing, focus on the one thing and get really good at that first and then move on to the next thing. Yeah. 100%. Like, I think, uh, on a, as a side to that, we've also had, we've worked with someone once who just did group coaching and did it very, very well mm-hmm. and didn't want to do one-to-one coaching, which again, it was fine. Like, we're not saying that you have to do one-to-one, by the way. It's just that for us, that would be the smartest thing to do for most coaches. But you could just go 100% on group coaching. But again, go 100% on it and know what max is for you on that. And as long as it makes sense for you, then that's great. And I think it, there's too many people who go, oh, well, I can't sell one-to-one, so oh, I better do group coaching now. What makes you think you're going to be any better at group coaching if you can't do the one-to-one or you can't get clients in one-to-one? Like, It's just that that sort of like shooting from the hip, like random, well, this didn't work, so... well why don't you figure out why it's not working Yeah. rather than thinking, oh, I better just change tact a little bit. Cause it's not necessarily that the concept doesn't work. It, it's just that the application probably wasn't right in most cases. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like honestly, those, that should be the priority for, uh, I, but we get it as well with, with, with um, in-person PT. So I get sometimes getting person PTs come to me and they go, oh, I want to be online coach. I want to do online coaching. I'm like, okay, cool. No worries. Let's, let's go in on that. Let's do that. And, you know, they might get a couple of clients initially online or whatever. And they will be like, oh, I dropped a few clients in person. So I need to pick them up or I'm going to have to cancel the mentor. And I'm like, what? No, but you wanted that to happen. It's you you, you want to get more online clients. So you're going to have to let them, those people go. And if you let them go, if you're just going to reestablish them and get more in, what the fuck are we doing? Mm-hmm. what's the point because you want that to happen that's the whole goal of this mm-hmm. is to get to that point and again it comes back to this where do your priorities lie mm-hmm. and I get that everyone needs to have a certain amount of money certain amount of income whatever but I know that if that was me and you that would just drive us more into online coaching 
If I'd lost two clients, I'd be like, right, that's two hours, two more hours of content creation it, then. It is happening to us. So you're going, you go one-to-one -one PT to online coach, two separate things. And in this anecdote, somebody's worried that they're dropping a one-to-one -one client and then veering more back towards one-to-one, -to -one, safe safe space. We are doing that. We've We've moved, not moved completely, but we are transitioning and this isn't me saying that we ever want to step away from fat loss coaching and nutrition training coaching, whatever. Um, but there was a point last year where I had a hundred fat loss nutrition clients. Mm. I've now got 50 mm -hmm. because I've, I've got 50 coaches. But that's the point that yeah. in that same anecdote, every time a, a, a couple of fat loss clients went, I go, oh, shit, I need to post more fat loss content because I need to get those back. No, no, no. I've just created more time to create more content towards mm -hmm. the coaches to get more coaches in. Yeah, like that's the, it's the same. Th it's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's one hundred percent the same thing. And 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 but we get that a lot from 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 those people, and they, and they they panic and they worry rather than seeing it as an opportunity, which is what most people would see it as. It's the rush to go. Well, I've got to get people through the door there, and it's like, well, no you should be now focused more on this. So, you know, it applies to all those things as well in, in fitness. It's just make the goal the goal. Mm -hmm. Same with, with training, like with your clients. Make the goal the goal. Don't flit around. If you had someone that every four weeks change from fat loss to muscle gain, they wouldn't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's the same with this. Like you need to focus and commit and go, we're all in. And you'll get much, much further than someone that fucks around. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Done. Get full first. That's what she said.